Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning to anybody that's west of where we are in Eastern Standard Time. My name is Tim Noka, and I am coordinator for today's webinar. The smart guy in the room is named Steve Gauthier. Steve brings with him 30 years of experience in working with business intelligence. He's well-versed in Tableau and in business objects. He has extensive experience also in data warehouse. In addition, he's worked with many database products such as Oracle DB2, Teradata, SQL Server, and many others. So Steve is going to be, as I say, the smart guy taking us through today's webinar and demonstration. A couple of ground rules, if, you, if I could. What we're going to do is take questions in the question area. As you put your questions in there, they will queue up, and what we will do is verbalize those questions to get Steve to answer them at 20 after the hour and at 40 after the hour. In addition, any that come in after 40 after the hour, Steve and I will stay in the room and make sure all the questions are answered before we leave. So with that, I turn the mic over to you, Steve. Thank you all very much for coming. We appreciate it. Well, again, as Tim said, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy days. So what we're going to cover today in dealing with Tableau is going to be a subset of material and examples that also are provided within our two-day boot camp courseware. They're not going to be the exact examples, but they will follow a similar flow, similar flow to what we've built all of our other classware on that's been very successful, which is looking at data acquisition, how we get our data and whatever the format is, and then taking that data and manipulating it, so data manipulation phase. And then lastly, the data display phase. So how do we get the data? What do we do to manipulate it to get it into a more user-friendly format? And then lastly, how do we want, or more importantly, how does the audience want us to display it? In our case, with dealing with Tableau, we're going to be looking specifically at the visualization side of the house. So in the end, we're going to hit high notes on a lot of different things. What we're going to do is we're going to start in the data acquisition phase. We're going to look at how we can acquire data and what are some of the more common formats that are provided. And those of us that have been doing BI as long as I have know that the most common format is Excel. We will then take that data, manipulate it, and then start building visualizations. And we're going to go on the premise that our end user community has requested that, hey, we've got this specific type of data and we want to build a dashboard, which is the common theme that I have heard for probably 15 to 20 years. Very general, we want a dashboard really don't know what you want, but they know they want a dashboard. And here's some of the data we're going to start with. So a lot of times it's going to be, the onus is going to be on us to build something and show that to them. And then they go yay or nay from there. And they start getting a better idea of what they're looking for. What we'll end up with in the very end is something looking like a parameter driven dashboard so that a user can, based on a radio button or a select switch, be able to switch the view within the dashboard. And that's what we're going to try to get to. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off here. I've already opened Tableau and I'm going to start off with the most common format that everybody uses that I have worked with. And again, that is, I know, anecdotal, but I have quite a few customers that do utilize this tool. And one of the things they do push to us is that, yep, Excel is it. Why? Because Excel has been the tool that has been around for a long time. So from within the home page, I'm simply going to select connect to a file. I'm going to select Excel. It's going to open up to a folder and I'm going to pick an Excel spreadsheet. Now, before we do that, what I want to do is look at the actual spreadsheet that we're going to be utilizing because one of the cool things about the Tableau tool is it has a tool within a tool that allows us to actually interpret the spreadsheet. So if you look at this spreadsheet we're going to use to begin with, we have basically a double block spreadsheet where we have more detailed information on the left hand side and more summarized information on the right hand side. So if I simply go back to Tableau and I say I'm going to use this Excel spreadsheet as my beginning data provider. It's going to open it up and because right now it only has one worksheet, it's going to distribute or display that worksheet. And even though the column names weren't in the first row, it was able to distinguish that, yes, these were column names. But if we scroll to the right, we'll notice we've got other column names where that sub table was, the more summarized sub table was. Now, the cool part about Tableau that I really like is this thing called data interpreter. It allows us to clean our Excel spreadsheet data. And all we have to simply do is check the checkbox. And what it will do is then, based upon its knowledge of what it's looking at, break that information out. Okay, so now if I remove 
report one and simply drag report one from cell to cell up, we can see that was our detail information, okay? If I want to look at my subset of information or my summarized set, I can simply drag that over the top and show that. Again, if I want to see how Data Interpreter works, I can click on this hyperlink that allows us to do a review the results. And it'll open up the Excel spreadsheet. And it will go through from our key for the Data Interpreter all of the different things that it did. So again, if we look at the actual tables that get created, it will show us what they are be, or what they see. And again, it can or distinguish between header information and data information. A very cool part of the tool that allows us to get our data right before we start utilizing it. So again, I'm going to go back. And I'm going to start with our cleaned up detail portion of the table. Now, the other thing to look at here is we have a couple different types of connections. We have live, which means we're connecting all the time to whatever the data source is. And we have extract, which would allow us to ex extract all of the information at that period of time inside the workbook itself or inside the, the Tableau book itself. And then obviously, if anything changed, we'd have to go back and refresh it. For the, for the length of our demo, we're simply going to leave our connection live. We're going to get into filters in a second. Now, if we look at the actual data type descriptions or the data type icons, it's very good. It can tell us, is this what, or what type of data we're looking at? We're looking at text data. We're looking at geographic type data. We are looking at date data, okay? Or are we looking at numbers? Now, like anything else, this might not be the only data that we want to utilize. Like other tools, we must have the ability to maybe bring things together and then be able to get to the data from there. So what if I had other information coming from a different source that we could link in here that would then allow us to pull all of that information together? So what I can do then is add a connection. And again, I can pick whatever it is. And again, yes, some are going to probably ask, why do you have a limited number of connections? And the simple reason for that is, is the tool in which, or the way in which we purchased the Tableau tool was through a third-party vendor, which has a more limited amount of data sources. So again, I'm going to pick the Microsoft Excel. And again, I'm going to pick, in this case, other Tableau example file. Okay. Now, notice what it did automatically. It said, oh, you pulled this in. It's got one worksheet. It's automatically trying to join that information together. It's an inner join based on common names. Okay? If I click on our Venn diagram, for those of, those of us that are old enough to remember Venn diagrams, currently we're looking at a pure inner join based on city. Now, a lot of the onus is going to be upon us to understand, hey, are there other joins that we may need that maybe the names are different? Okay, and it's not smart enough to be able to join those together. So I know that we have yearly information in here that beyond city we need to be able to join to. Now this tool will, like other tools, allow us to be silly or stupid, depending upon which way you want to call it. And let's say I said, yeah, I want to join this stuff together on year two on an inner join. So I'm only worried about the stuff that we actually have that is common between both files. Notice what happens, though, when I do that. All of a sudden, I get no data, and you're like, well, I know. My years are common. I saw the numbers. I'm looking right at them. I saw the numbers. Why aren't they showing? Well, then we can look at our data types, right? If I look up year from my original Tableau D1 sheet, it is numeric, okay, versus my year from my second Tableau sheet is alphanumeric. Now, we've got one or two places we could actually make the switch here and change the data type. We could actually go to the sheet level where we actually see our data area. And I could go to year here, click the down arrow next to it, and then change the data type. Okay. However, right within the data source itself, I can do the exact same thing. I can click on the data type itself, left mouse click, and then pick in this case, what I want to join or what I want to convert it to, which is a whole number. Now, as soon as that happens, 
even though the joins were in place, boom, now we're only seeing the actual inner join between the two different data sources. So on city and on year. All right, now, looking at sort functionality, okay? Right now it's by data source order. So in the way they came in from the spreadsheet is the way it's being displayed. We have other options as well. We have A to Z ascending. So if I do this, notice what it does. It intermixes the information, okay? By name. Now, this is nice when we're trying to look at columns we may want to join together that have similar names. We could look at them, okay? Obviously, if you have ascending, we also have descending. And we can also do it per table. So we can sort them per table. So in this case, table meaning our two different spreadsheet report levels or two different spreadsheet worksheets that we're currently utilizing to be joined together. And again, we can scroll from right to left looking at the different sorts. For the most part, I leave mine in data source order. I at least go back to that so I can see the way things came across. Now, obviously, we may need the ability to join things differently than a standard inner join, okay? No different than when we merge things together. For those of us that are familiar with web intelligence and we want to be able to display one side of the merge versus the other, we have the same capability here. If I was worried more about making sure I have all the data from the Tableau D1 sheet, I could change this into a left join. The same thing goes for if I was interested in only gaining the information, whether it had crossover or not, that came from the Tableau D2 sheet. I could make it a right join. Then, of course, and again, if you see here, the reason why we're getting that is, hey, we've got a lot of stuff here in our second worksheet that came from 2015 that we have no match for that came out of the original worksheet from Tableau D1. Now, of course, just like when you do a merge within Web Intelligence, and again, I can go back and forth because I'm fluent in both, we could do something called a full outer join as well, and we'd get the information out of both. Now, to do something like that, maybe we have to go beyond just the connection. So let's go back to our standard inner joints. And let's say that we were only interested in information that not only is in between or is com a combination of both our data sets, but let's say our number of guests field actually had a value in it. That's what we were interested in in building the visualization that we were going to utilize. Well, what we can do is actually then add a filter. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go up and I'm going to say add a data source filter. And we said it's going to be on number of guests. And I'm going to say it has to be at least one. Okay, so the number of, uh, number of guests has to include values that are greater than or equal to one. Now, again, we have basically eliminated anything with a zero or a null. So we have the ability to edit. Now, if they came back to us and said, well, for these visualizations that we're going to build, we're only interested in the information that comes from the United States. Well, we could go back and simply edit our filter. We could add another filter, and we could go to our country. We could add that and simply select United States, okay? Now, again, obviously, for those of us that understand, what we're doing is an and statement between those two, all right? So now we're only seeing information from the United States that there was a value of in number of guests, okay? So now we've reduced the amount of data that we're going to actually be utilizing within the visualizations, okay? That's what we're going to then be utilizing to display. Now, what if they came back to us? Now, the other thing to understand too, if you didn't note it, I'm going to go back to our country. I'm going to edit that. Let's say our list of countries was quite large. And what we were saying was instead of picking those, that we know we wanted, we only knew, we knew that we were only going to eliminate one, okay? So more of a not equal situation. We also have the functionality to exclude. So something in our little world here that we could do, 
is I could change and say, well, let's say there was others beyond this. And we said, look, the only thing we don't, we want to eliminate here is we're not interested in building visualizations for anything from France. What we could do is select France and select the exclude ability. Okay. Now, how you, how you put it together here, and again, you see your selection excluded one of the two values. If I click OK, note, though, that the actual text does not change in the filter. So what that would say is if there were more than one country, it would say country, keep, and then the values of all the other countries that were displayed. So we're not just limited to always having to pick the values that we're going to utilize. Again, like anything else, if we need to edit it, we showed that. If we were going to, let's say we took over a workbook from somebody, we could then utilize it to see other things. We could simply remove the filters as well. And then we go back to seeing all of the data or utilizing all of the data. Now, the other part to this, when we're linking or joining data sources together, you may, or even in a single data source that you may receive as an extract, you may get a lot of columns that you're just not going to utilize. IDs, et cetera, and things that you don't want to bring in and see in the data tab. Well, obviously, like everything else, we have to have the ability to possibly get rid of those. So if I wasn't interested, if I knew I was joined on the years and I only wanted to see one of the years, I can simply come over to the down arrow and I can do a hide. Okay, even though the value exact exists in the worksheet and we're joined on it, I don't have to utilize it or I'm not going to utilize it when I get to actually building my visualizations. So I can hide what I don't want to see. Now, if you ever receive a book, a Tableau book from someone, and maybe you don't know whether or not they're hiding things, we can also check this checkbox that says show hidden fields. Okay, now. Beyond this, we've already shown how we can sort on, let me close this, how we can sort on different data sources, all right, or on the source itself, right? I can also sort on individuals, but what if we came at this a different way and said, well, okay, we're not using Excel at this point in time. Maybe we want to just use a SQL data provider. So what I can do is I'm going to actually eliminate these. And I'll add, in this case, something from SQL Server. And yes, Tim, I'm going to go over just a minute here, and then we can go sure. to questions if that's okay. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm going to log into my SQL Server, and I'm looking at a specific database. Some of you may know this database and will probably laugh at it. That's okay. And I'm going to actually remove our original Excel connection. Now, because I have all this list of tables, very similarly to what we can do in other tools, I can drag these tables out and join them together, okay? So again, country to country, all right? If I do an update now, I can see the data. I could then grab city here, which is going to be, whoops, region ID to region ID and city and join it that way. Okay, that's a long, cumbersome way. A lot of times what you have are other tools, whether they be Web Intelligence or OBIE or MicroStrategy, whatever the case, that may be accessing data, might just be pure SQL. We can grab that SQL. I'm going to remove these for the sake of argument for right now. And we can utilize that. So I can say new custom SQL. It's going to open an empty SQL area. By chance, I happen to have one of these available. So I'm just going to copy it in for the sake of argument. Copy that and paste it in here. Click OK. And now I have custom SQL that I can generate my data from. OK, and again, as I was saying, if I want to sort on individual values, I can also sort, excuse me, on individual values. 
now if you want to take you if we want to take our break tim this is the perfect time okay great thank you very much for anybody that's come in afterwards what we're doing is at 20 after the hour and 40 after the hour it's question and answer time so any questions that you might have put them in the question area one other caveat that i'd like to say in a webinar that is this technical i truly am parroting i have no well, not no, but very little idea what it is that I'm saying. So to the questioner, if there's any clarification that you want to put into the question area as well, I will read that to Steve uh, if I screw anything up. That being said, Steve, we currently have three questions in queue. First one, why did Tableau default the data type of year in the second data source to date? The first data source set year to numeric by default. The first one, actually, if we go back to it, was actually set to alpha and not date. Uh, and it's all in how the Excel worksheet work was created. I have yet to see one that's actually set to an actual date format without it truly being a date. So what, normally what it is, it's either going to be an alphanumeric or a numeric. What's the second question? What is the difference in the colors for the symbols? Is it in regards to year? Yes. If you're talking on the data tab, being able to tell whether it's a numeric versus an alpha, discrete versus continuous, green versus blue, yes, that's what it does. It differentiates the type of data. Excellent. And the third one is, I am familiar with Power Query and M. Does the Tableau data interpreter have a language behind it? Does it create steps in the WYSIWYG view that you can review, reorder, etc.? That is an excellent question that I'm going to have to do a little more background on. I have not been asked that one before. So if we can put that one aside, that will be some investigation I will do for whoever asked. Okay, great. Um, and I've got that. So we will make sure to get back with you after the webinar. We got your email address. One's come in since we started talking. So give me a second. Can you have one connection SQL and another connection as Excel? Sure. So if I came in like we have here and I do an add and I go in Excel and I pick my first Excel spreadsheet, now it's going to come in and say, okay, we've got two different connections, but how do we need to join these together? So it's going to be then incumbent upon me to make sure that whatever's in my SQL query and or my Excel spreadsheet has some common data that we can link them together on. Okay, good. I got another one. Does this work with Oracle? Yes. Easy question, yes, it easy does. answer. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. If I go back, let's see if I actually can show that. And again, more in, yeah, here we go, more. Right there is Oracle. Now, again, like I said, my view of the world within Tableau is a little bit different than somebody who bought Tableau straight from Tableau and that they get all of the data sources. Mine is limited based on who I bought or the OEM product through. Another one. Can I connect multiple SQL qu queries? Sure. Yep. Yeah, and that'll be the same thing as we're doing here with Excel. If I have multiple queries, then I have to have common data that I can link their data sets together on. All right, sir. I think you're free to roll on. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. Good ones. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to go back to something that we had, and we'll move forward down the path of what our end user is asking for. So I'm going to remove my SQL Server query as well. All right, now notice again, because it's Excel, Data Interpreter always, it will normally pop up if it recognizes anything out of the ordinary. Now I'm looking at my data, I can see that, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. So we're going to go on the premise that our audience, our end users have requested from this data some sort of dashboard, which is normally what occurs. Again, doing this, as Tim said, for as long as I have, long thought I'd be done doing this, but not so true, that I've learned a lot in that some things never change. And that is usually the audience, the end user community hasn't changed. They want something, they're just not really sure how to describe it to you. So a lot of times it's, here's our data, we want a dashboard, build something. And we'll tell you if we like it or not. So that's what we're going to go on the premise at this point in time. So one of the things we're going to say is unknown is we've been provided this where we have revenue, we have a cost and how much we sold, but what we want to be able to get to is we want to see what profit we made at that individual line level and be able to roll it up from city to year, et cetera, to month to year, I should say. And profit is based upon the revenue minus our cost. 
Well, obviously, since we don't have that, if we're not Excel people and we don't build that format, it's going to be incumbent upon us to manipulate the data, which is our second phase, to manipulate the data to get to that that we can use. All right, so what we're going to do, we've gone beyond, this is our data set, this is what we're going to use. I'm going to go into my authoring, my Tableau authoring workspace. All right, where we can see, for those of us, again, that utilize other tools, similar naming functionalities, right? Dimensions, measures, all right? In, again, our dimensions, we have geographic type dimensions. Within that geographic type dimension, we also have a hierarchy. If I can click on the right arrow, it would be helpful. So, oh, I should say, underneath there, we have country and city. And it will guess at that point in time. It will know that based upon the cities that it has internal to it. We have an alphanumeric called lines. We have a numeric called month. We have a alphanumeric called year, and then we can come down to our measures where we have number, number, number. All right, so we have information that's already been provided to us. But, like I said, we're going to need to be able to provide this thing called profit. So we need to create something called a calculated field. So within measures itself, and it's a little more difficult at times, I can actually start up here if I want. In the white space anywhere, I can go create calculated field. So that's what I'm going to start with. Right mouse click, create calculated field, and I'm going to give it a name. Like every other tool that we use, we can name something. And again, over on the other side, we can see all of the different functions. And very similar to other tools, they are characterized by their different categories. We have numerics, we have strings, we have dates, we have type conversions, we have logical aggregate user and table calculations. Obviously, we do not have the time today to go through all of them, but I can say within the class where if you end up taking our boot camp, you're going to see a great variety of those. What I know is this is a simple calculation. I simply want to subtract cost from sales revenue. So what I can do is from my data tab, simply drag sales revenue into the formula area, add the calculation symbol for minus, and then subtract cost from sales revenue. Now, the beauty of it is, is it will automatically check our work. Okay, this is the one thing I truly do like about Tableau as well, is it looks at our work and says, hey, what you've done is right. If it says it's wrong, it will give you an idea of why it is wrong. So sales revenue minus cost. Click OK, and notice it automatically adds it to our measures. Okay, it's a calculated field. So if I had to, because it's a calculated field, if I click on the arrow next to it, I can always go back to edit it. And much like other tools, I can copy it, I can duplicate it, I can rename it at any time, et cetera, et cetera. And again, if I'm not using it, I can delete it. So again, we've created the measure we're looking for. Now, let's say, like everything else, we're continuing to evolve here, and we hear more information from the end users that, look, what we, want to, we, what we may want to do is look at our data. One of the things we've liked that we've used in other tools is the line charting capability. Well, I know if I go over here and I show all of the different visualization capabilities, if I look at my line charts and I highlight them, another cool part about Tableau is it will tell you what is necessary to build these. And one of the things it's saying, no matter which one I look at, is it needs a date. Well, one of the things we're totally missing here is a date. But what, but what we do have are two pieces of a date, okay? We have the year and the month. Now, if we're not worried about the physical day, because we're going to look at things in year and month only, we're going to need to create a date, which means we're going to need to create another calculated field. So if I right mouse click again out in the white area below dimensions and say create calculated field, I'm going to create something here called, oops, my typing. For those of you that know me, obviously hasn't gotten any better. Called sales date. And again, if I went to date specific fields or functions, I could do that. But I know I'm going to use a make function. And again, the cool part about it is if I look, yeah, make date. What's it going to return? It's going to return a date value constructed from year, month, day. And here's the syntax for it. So if I double click, it'll click it over, move it into the formula, and then it will tell me what it needs. Okay, it needs a year. Hmm, okay. 
and then it's delimited by a comma, and then it needs a month, okay, and then it's delimited by a comma, and then it needs a, a day. And again, if I don't care what the day is, I'll just put in one. Oh, but there's an issue. Again, nicely checking my syntax for me. If I click on that down arrow, it's going to tell me something. Look, make date is being called with string integer integer. Did you mean, and it kind of gives you a, hey, which is another cool function about help text. I know other tools that aren't quite as helpful, and I'll leave them nameless. All right. I can go and make the adjustment. I can still click OK, even though there's a syntax error. So if I click OK, notice it puts it here in measures, but tells me by the exclamation point, it, it's a problem. What I can do then is I can come to my year, click the down arrow next to it, and say change the data type to a whole number. Okay, instantly sales date then moves to my dimension and it starts being displayed or being it's showing its type as a date type. Okay. Now let's take a look now if we're into where we can start looking at some data. All right. I can by using my shelves, my column shelf or my row shelf, and my marks cards, I can start looking at my data and seeing how I may want to build information that my end users may want. Again, they haven't come back to us and said, this is exactly what we want. So we may have to build some things that give them an idea of which way they want to go. Okay? So let's say I went out and said, well, hmm, what if I put sales date out here in the row? And you look at it and go, wait, 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 wait. That's not what I asked for. I asked for sales date. For those of us who come from a reporting environment, this is one thing it throws you. Because it's a date, what it will do is it will then parse that date out in its pieces. So if I click on the plus sign, what it will do is then start breaking it down. Quarter and then month, et cetera. Okay? I can always click on the down arrow and pick exactly what I'm looking for, too. So if I was looking for just the year, I can start with that. And again, what I've currently defaulted to is something called a text table. All right, now, the other part. If you receive a book from somebody and you're trying to figure out what they've done and what functions have been used, if I double click on the actual, in this case, the date, it will tell me the function that's being used. It's using the date part function and it's parsing out the year from the actual date element, in our case, calculated field, called sales date. Now, let's say I want to see my years and my sales revenue. I got a couple different ways I could go about it. I could either drag, as soon as I click it the right area, I can either drag it into my text, okay, which is where I was trying to get it to. I could have dragged it like quantity sold up here to the right in the rows. And again, notice what it will do. This is the one thing that does frustrate me at times with Tableau. As I move things around, because again, I come from a reporting background, it will automatically flip things on me when I may just want to see the data. I like, because I'm a data person, I may want to see the physical data first, so I want to keep it in a text table, and it will constantly change the look and feel of what I want. So I then have to manipulate it to see the things I want to see. or in the fashion that I want to see it. All right. Oof. Now, again, notice on all our measure values, it's showing a lot more than what I'm looking for. So I can just simply remove these to get possibly what I'm looking for. All right, so now we've got a simple little text table to begin with. What if, hmm, what if we wanted to see that across lines? So I could see my revenue. So I could bring it up here and put columns. And you look at that and go, uh, yeah, it's what I want, but not quite in the fashion I want to see it. I just want my four columns of years across the top. So for those of us that are used to looking things in other tools, maybe in a cross table type format, I could switch those by simply switching where the actual values are. So I want years across the top of my columns, lines in my rows, and now I see, in this case, from 
my text marks card, the sum of sales revenue being displayed. Okay, that's cool. That's a start. I'm seeing my data. I'm starting to get an idea of what I get to work with here. But of course, like anything else, if I'm looking at raw data, I want to see totals too. How do I go about that? Well, beyond the data tab within our authoring area here, I can go to my analytics tab. One of the things that it will provide under summarize is totals. And if I drag totals over here, I can then pick what type of total I want to see. Well, if I was looking for just columns totals, I can select that, which again, automatically generates those totals for me. If I want my row total, then I can simply drag it over here and select row totals, and then I get both. So now I have a visualization showing data, physical data, based upon what, in this case, my different years, my sales revenue, and all the lines that were sold. Now, what I did is I simply, maybe I want to look at, hey, what were my best sellers across all these years? So as I moved my mouse to the right of, in this case, 2018, the year of 2018, you notice there's a little sort icon where I can sort high or sort low. Pretty straightforward, standard stuff. I can automatically do that, and it will show the data in the fashion I want to see. Now I can see things in a more high to low fashion. So if I wanted to eliminate some of these, I could eliminate some of these. That's just a start. Now, much like other tools too, obviously we get something called very generic sheet one. If I right mouse click, I can simply rename that to something else like my totals, just for the sake of argument. Okay, ooh, and again, forgive my spelling. If I double click, click I can do the exact same thing and hopefully spell it somewhat correctly. Again, those that know me know I'm not the greatest typist in the world. For somebody who does this for a living, I know. It's crazy. So again, we have the capability of creating reporting-like environments. All right, it is according to what I see on my screen. 1240, Tim, you want to take this and see how many other questions we have received? We got four so far, and based on last experience, we're going to get more as we talk. After you show hidden fields, is there an easy visual way to quickly see which fields were hidden? Other than to check the box that says show hidden fields, I'm not sure. That's not something I've had to do a lot of. Okay, fair enough. Is there a place that shows the total number of rows that exist in the data that we are using? To make sure I get that answer completely correct, let me get back to them on that one as well. Okay. Do end users have the ability to enter notes on a Tableau report? That, again, is a very good question. I'm going to have to get back on that. Well, and again, no, let me get back to them on that. I want to make sure I fully can check on that before I say yay or nay. It's not something, again, that I've had the request that I have to do, but I want to make sure I'm right. Fair enough. And just a reassurance to you guys, of course, we have your, your questions and your email addresses, so it's not going to be tough to follow up. They're, they keep coming in, so I'm going to keep going. Once you build a dashboard, how do you share the dashboard with, with the end user? Uh, that, that's a very good question. Because this is a desktop tool, you have either your, the people you're going to share it with. If you don't, if, well, first let's go with you can either be using Tableau Online, money, Tableau Server. Again, if, you're, if you have Tableau Server, you can share it that way. If you're purely a desktop shop, what that would mean is everybody would need the Tableau Freeware Viewer to be able to see that. Either that or the actual desktop that we're using right now. Okay. Can you merge using the calculated field? When you say merge data sets, going back to the data sets, can we create a calculated field and join on that? I'm pretty sure we can, but again, take that one to the side so I can actually build something and show them. And again, when I say show them, I'll, cop, I'll cut it out and actually send it to them in the email to display it. Very good. Can you also drill down to month on the current dashboard? If the data is in a drillable fashion, the answer is yes, just like so. And again, this isn't a dashboard, it's a view, but this view could be put in the dashboard and made drillable. OK. 
Okay. And I would and I would do that with a parameter, but we're going to get into that in a second. When sharing re these reports via Tableau server, other users don't have have to have the reader installed. Question. Also, if, if tying the data source to an Oracle database, when is the SQL statement executed? Okay, number one, if you have Oracle Server and the users who need access are users within the Oracle Server, they wouldn't need the viewer as far as I am told. As for Oracle, as soon as the connection, if it's a live connection, the connection is made, and again, depending upon whether you're the one that's actually doing the update now or when a user opens the dashboard would be when the SQL is ran if it is a live connection, if it's an extract, the data would automatically be in the dashboard itself. Okay, very good. And for everybody's knowledge, that wraps up the questions for now. We will do Q&A again. Steve and I will stay until every question is answered in case they, they take us past the top of the hour. Um, and he'll be sure to wrap up the material by the top of the hour. With that, it's back to you, Steve. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is then we're going to build now, let's say we've on the premise that they got back to us and said, yes, here's what we want. We want a dashboard where we can see our a line chart showing sales revenue. Below that, a line chart showing what we sold in the way of quantity sold, and then the line chart below that showing our profit. We want to be able to see that yearly, and we want to be able to see that monthly. Okay, and I want to be able to switch between the two in the dashboard. I don't want to have two separate dashboards, one showing one, one showing the other. I want to be able to switch between the two. In order to accommodate that, I need to use something called a parameter. Okay, so I'm going to come down here first. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to create a parameter. And I'm going to create a parameter called, eh, we'll call it dashboard view. Something that they would understand because this would be the title. And I'm going to change the data type to a string. And then for my allowable values, they're going to have two. One's going to be a monthly view, and the other's going to be a yearly view. OK, so we have a parameter. OK, currently set, again, if I click on the down arrow next to it, now we have a parameters area. And I edit this, and it's currently set to the value of monthly. That is the current value. Now. What we need to be able to do first is I'm going to go generate a line chart that does this, and we're going to go one step further is to be able to filter it based on that value. I'm going to have to create a calculated field that utilizes the parameter. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to create this calculated field, and I'm just going to call it view. And inside of there, if I just type in DA, notice what it will do is automatically highlight, oh, you want to use this parameter, right, called dashboard view. That's it. So that's my calculated field. Okay, calculated field that just simply points back to the parameter. Now, I'm going to go build another sheet here. And we said that we want line charts. And we're going to use sales date. And we're going to use, to start with, sales revenue. Okay, I want to change this to a line chart. Okay, simple line chart showing my information. So I'm going to simply right mouse click this now. I'm going to rename it and call this yearly revenue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yearly revenue. Now the beauty of this, just like we showed you earlier, is we have the capability to then take this, right mouse click, and we'll duplicate it. And I will rename it. And this is going to now change to my yearly sales. And I'm going to replace my sales, sum of sales revenue here with my quantity sold, like so. Okay? So, and again, we're not going to get into all the formatting at this moment in time because, again, it's we're counting down on the hour. Now, lastly, I'm going to go out and now utilizing our new field, our profit field, we're going to look at profit. So if I do a duplicate. Change the name, profit. OK, now I'm going to replace quantity sold with profit, like so.
Now, again, going a little deeper, which is what I should have done before, what if they came back to us and said, look, what I want to also see is an a where our average line is, and I want to, below it, shade that in. Well, I can go to analytics. This would make life a lot easier. And I can pick my average line and say, based on the table, If I click on or click on my average line and then I can say I want to fill below and let's just say we'll make it whatever light gray. Okay, so everything below that average line we're falling below what we expect. Or it could be a constant line. That was also something that's available. Again, just as an example. Would have been a lot easier if I duplicated it after I had done that cuz that would stay in place. All right, so we've got our yearly values. All right, now what I'm going to do is go back to my data tab. I'm going to change my dashboard view to edit this. I'm going to change my value to be displayed currently to be yearly. Okay, now I'm going to take my calculated field and add it as a filter. And I'm going to say only display this when it's set to yearly. Click OK. Same thing for my other two views of information. Oops, come on filter. There we go. Again, I only want to display it when that yearly value is displayed. And then I'll pick profit. All right, so again, notice because of that. Now, the other part I can do here is I'm going to click on it just for the sake of argument, and I want to say, hey, show me the parameter control. And you're like, well, where did it go? Well, it's actually being hidden by all my calculations. There's my dashboard view. Now, the other part to this is currently it's just a pull-down list. If I want to change the type of gadget that's being utilized, I can click the down arrow near the dashboard view title and change it to something else. Maybe, in this case, let's say radio button. Okay, I'll change it to the radio button. Now, again, obviously, if I click on monthly, watch what happens. It goes bye-bye, which is the ultimate goal. But what we need to do is build our yearly or our monthly values the same way we built the yearly values. So what I'm going to do is go back to yearly revenue. Again, right mouse click, duplicate it. I'm going to change year now to be month. Okay, and I'll rename this monthly revenue. I'll do the same to sales. Again, change this to month. Rename. And lastly, we'll duplicate this. Okay, we're going to month and rename. Just makes life a little easier. Monthly. Whoopsie. Get rid of this garbage. Okay. Now. In order for the function to work correctly here, what I have to do is I'm going to change my dashboard view to monthly. And then I'm going to edit the filter for each of my monthly views. So if I edit the filter, I'm going to say, hey, show this when it's set to monthly. Click OK, and it will display. Go to sales, edit the filter, change it to monthly. Click OK, go to Revenue, same thing, edit the filter, change it to Monthly. All right, in a very generic fashion, we've gotten the views possibly where we want them to be. But because we're running low on time, I'm simply going to move ahead. I'm going to create a dashboard, again, a new icon here. I'm going to then use a container. 
I'm going to use a vertical container and I'm going to drag it into the dashboard. Again, one of the things you're going to end up looking at is typically looking at the size. What do you want to do, whether it be fixed or automatic? Automatic is nice when you don't know what devices are being used. I'm going to change the size, whoops, the other way, just a little bit. Okay, just for the sake of argument. Now it's a matter of dragging in what we want to see. We did a vertical. So we're going to start with yearly. So again, notice it's not being displayed. I want yearly revenue there. I said then I want my yearly sales below it. And then I want my yearly profit. Now, if I want to see what they're going to look like, I can simply switch to my view. And there they are. Okay, if I go back to monthly, then they're currently hitting, and we're going to get you. We're going to get these cleaned up in a second. Now, if I want to see monthly, I could do it one of two ways. I could slide these in between each other, or I can add them to the end. So, if I want monthly revenue, and then I'm going to switch the. I'm going to scroll down here and go monthly sales. Whoops, right there and then monthly profit. Now, by changing from yearly to monthly, so somehow my filters got jacked, but that's okay. We can go back and fix those. What we need to be able to do to hide what we're looking for is go to the title area and make sure we hide the titles. And then it would be a matter of formatting them in the way we want to display. Now again, I can also take this if I want and change it to floating to where I could put it wherever I wanted. And again, if I needed to resize these a little bit, it's simply a matter of resizing them the way I want to see them and then putting this where I want. Whoops, grabbing the top. Now if I wanted to look and see how this worked actually, when they looked at it in a more presentation mode, I can simply come to presentation mode and flip back and forth. Now, obviously, there we go. I would have to go clean these up as well when I was displaying them to make sure they dropped into the area that I wanted. Okay? This was more of a functional show you how it works, flipping back and forth. All right. Get out of presentation mode. You simply hit escape. All right, so basically what we've done is create a parameter-driven dashboard that allows us or allows the audience to flip back and forth between the look. Now, again, there would be cleanup to do here to make sure everything looked exactly the way we wanted it to, but the fact of the matter is that they are both available. And again, I could change these views to make sure that they looked exactly the way I wanted them to. All right, so it's 12.57. Do we have questions? Of course we do. There's a, of course. It's a question-oriented audience. So we do have a couple of questions, if I could. I'd just yeah. like to say a couple of things before we get to the questions. Again, our thanks to everybody for coming. This is, as Steve kind of pointed to a few times through the demonstration, a, uh, a very brief subset of a couple of day boot camp class that is available in Pittsburgh. February 26, 27 is available several times after that virtually so that you could take it from anywhere in the country or in the world. And we have another webinar coming up on March 7th. You might want to look out for that also on our website. Steve will be coming back and that webinar is going to be on web intelligence. I think it's also important to say, obviously, if you came just for the webinar, just for the demo, that is, of course, fine. But to let you guys know that there were more than a 100 of you out there today, and these classes come up very often because we got half a dozen or more people that requested the same thing. So if you do want to go a little bit more in depth, please make sure that you let us know through your account manager and we might be able to piece a class together that is not currently scheduled. 
With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the Q&A. As I've said a few times, thank you all for coming. It's greatly appreciated. Steve and I will be here until the last question is answered. In the meantime, if you need to get going, we certainly understand that. Question one, mm -hmm. why is it called a tree map if it does not look like something that branches? Does it have something to do with the logic behind how the visual works? That is, a, again, another question I'm going to have to look in the logic for. I, I think I've, simply, I've asked that same question, but I have not gone out and actually looked at the logical answer for it. So take that one to the side, but that's an excellent question. Okay, very good. Is there a size limitation on data set it could process? Not one that I have found, but like any visualization tool, I, uh, normally the data that you're going to try to utilize is going to be in the most summarized fashion you can provide, just for speed and efficiency purposes. Is the report can scheduled to run automatically? Again, before I answer that, let me do a little digging. I'm, I think there is a scheduling functionality to it, but I've got to look into it. I know on the server side there would be, but I'm not sure from the desktop side. Do we have a two-day class scheduled in the near future? The answer is yes. You can find it on our website. The next one is at the end of February. I believe it's 26 and 27 scheduled for Pittsburgh. We start scheduling them virtually after that. The first one available is in May. And again, as I said, if we get enough requests to do it, we will put it together based on those requests. Please speak to your account manager from ProTech about that. Okay. I think that's a wrap. We got nothing else coming in. Again, I appreciate everybody coming on board and uh, watching the webinar. If you're interested in learning the tool in depth in a two-day format, sign up for the boot camp. Okay, y'all. Thanks very much again. Have a great day. Thank you very much.